Hey guys, welcome back to another video. In a previous video, you guys saw me um, set up the UNAS 2 from Ubiquity. Um, that is a new NAS product that Ubiquity has. Uh, in this video, we're actually going to be setting it up off-site, connecting it to this Raspberry Pi, and setting it up to be a remote backup server for all of my data center stuff. So um, it'll back up virtual machines for data center customers. It's gonna back up storage. It's gonna back up all kinds of stuff. We're gonna be encrypting all the backups. It's gonna be pretty cool. So let's get started. So I'm back home this weekend from college to set this up. And here is the plan. So we have a Pi 4. Um, this is a Pi 4B. Um, not that it necessarily matters, but this port is going to be for WAN. This is going to be for LAN or vice versa. I don't remember actually. Um, but either way, one of these is WAN, one is LAN. It's going to make a local network that the UNAS 2 is going to connect to, as well as connect via USB to the UPS unit that we are going to be bringing as well. And the UPS unit is going to be running um, basically all of the Wi-Fi for the house that we're going to. This is actually a family member's house, so I have no equipment there right now, but we're going to be installing this. That way they have a UPS um, on their internet connection. It is, I believe, a 600 volt amp UPS. So it's one of the bigger ones, not huge, but it's bigger than a 400 volt amp or a 225, or whatever the smallest one is. But um, it's gonna be big enough that it's gonna run everything for hopefully a little bit on battery power. Um, mostly it's for my equipment, but it's going to have the added benefit of keeping their network online uh, during a power outage as well. So. That's pretty cool. If you guys remember from the previous video, I actually brought a eight terabyte drive over, but unfortunately the eight terabyte drive failed and was no longer passing any smart tests. So I was like, we're getting rid of that drive. Um, but that being said, I've got the UNAS right here, as well as the POB injector that it came with. And I'm going to do a uh, small little test setup of everything right now to make sure that it all works the way that I want it to before I bring it over there and realize something doesn't work. Ideally, I just want tomorrow's trip to just be a quick uh, set it and forget it kind of deal. Um, but we got the UNAS there. Let me plug in the, uh, the POB injector. Okay, so here is the setup right now. We've got the Pi, the blue cable right there is the WAN connection. The LAN connection, I do remember being the USB adapter. That's going into the PoE injector and then into the UNAS 2. Now we are powering the Pi from this anchor brick that is only a three amp brick. Um, Pi 5s take uh, five amps. I think a three amp is fine for a Pi 4. Um, but we got the PoE++ injector for the UNAS 2. And that is all I'm going to run at this site. So uh, theoretically it's everything I should ever need um, because not only do I get the Pi, uh, but I also get the um, networking and stuff capabilities for the UNAS 2. And I could always add more. I could add a second UNAS 2. I could upgrade to a bigger UNAS, all kinds of cool stuff like that. Um, but the foundation is all just stuff that I already had. One thing I did forget though, is the USB cable that is gonna go from the UPS into the Pi. Um, that's really important. Um, I wrote some custom code uh, via Gemini recently. And basically there's a script that runs on the Pi um, that automatically reports UPS data into a SQL database. So essentially um, all of the data is fed into a SQL database. Um, and then I have Grafana, which is visualizing it and kind of keeping track of the stats and stuff. So I can actually automatically calculate how much power I'm using, um, how much power I may need to, or how much I might need to um, pay my family member to compensate for how much power I'm using, etc. cetera. Um, if it's like a negligible amount of power, I'll just pay like per year, just like a fixed rate or something probably. But um, if it's something a little more considerable um, in terms of the amount of power, or if their power is expensive at their house, I will of course pay them. It's very nice of them to let me put that there to begin with. So I wanna make sure that they're compensated for whatever I'm using. I apologize for the absolutely horrendous video quality, uh, but you'll see it now it says last seen zero minutes ago. We are looking at the top row there, which means everything is now connected. Um, it was not plugged in through USB all the way. So that was what the issue was. Um, but I did see on the UNAS 2 screen that it um, has no errors or anything, which means it's probably online, which is really good because that means my NAT rules and such are working um, in the way that I expected them to, which is really good. Although I don't see it on the Unify website yet, so we are going to check some logs. So I cannot show you my SSH session, of course, there's too much stuff on the screen, but the issue with the uh, UNAS not showing up online was because the DNS was not working on Nginx because I don't have this on my WireGuard configuration yet. Um, so long story short, it was DNS. It's always DNS. It always will be DNS. Okay, so this is the Grafana dashboard that I've created. 
Um, so essentially here's what we have going on. So we have our current power usage, which is a graph. So it is an interactive graph. Uh, I can't show you because I have this sticky note on my screen, but you can actually highlight, you can go to certain times, see the usage. We have kilowatt hours consumed, uh, which is actually just showing how much power we've consumed over time. We have estimated cost, um, which is kind of a calculation based on the kilowatts consumed. We have event history, so anytime the, UDP, anytime the UPS goes on a battery power or back to wall power, it'll show here. We have our battery runtime, which is an estimation of how much time we can run on battery power. We have our battery percentage, which is currently 96%. And then we have our current watt usage. So currently we're using 16.5 watts for the Pi, for the UNAS, and that's it. All right, so I just wrapped up over at the family member's house. I've gotten all of that stuff kind of sorted out. Um, unfortunately though, he did have a uh, UFI security camera system connected to his Eero router um, through the secondary ethernet port. And I really would not care, I, I really would not care about that except for the fact that um, I was banking on using that ethernet port for my Raspberry Pi. So I'm running home, um, it's like 15 minutes away, but I'm running home real fast and I'm going to grab either a Unify switch. I, I do have a Flex Mini switch available. Um, although I might just grab like a cheap Netgear switch and actually kind of split his internet connection off from the ONT. Um, and then that will give me a completely separate public IP from the ISP. It's the same ISP that I have in my house. So it's really not a huge deal either way. Um, I'm actually kind of leaning towards using the Unify router or sorry, the Flex Mini switch uh, because then I can use Unify Network Manager and Unify Network Controller to control that. So I don't really care what I use. Um, no matter what though, I do just need to get uh, the internet connection into my Raspberry Pi device. And I am doing that now. I just added a secondary ethernet adapter on the output so I can bridge the interface from uh, the family member's router, which is really annoying because if my Pi reboots, if the Pi crashes and a security cameras go offline, I don't want that responsibility. So I'm going back and I'm resolving that issue just by putting a flex mini switch there. Um, I really need to be quick. I really don't have much time. I feel like all my videos lately have been rushed, but this one especially, um, I was hoping to go to uh, the church I work for and work a little bit um, and be done at 4.15. It's 3.37, so I'm definitely not hitting that goal. I need to rewrite my net plan and ISC DHCP file uh, so that way I can do layer three adoption of the Flex Mini switch. Although I am kind of leaning toward doing the layer two adoption and routing it through WireGuard and having the Pi do the layer three. Kind of my preferred method, honestly. It, it is what it is. It's just gonna be a matter of time. So whatever I have time to do is gonna be what I'm gonna get done. I'm really hoping that there's no floods or anything. I might ask him to put a shelf up or something. Potentially, um, I know it's, I, I don't wanna be picky, um, but that would give me some peace of mind knowing that my uh, 28 terabytes of storage is not gonna get screwed up in the event of a flood or um, even just water leakage or something. Um, it's right under the electrical panel, so it's probably not a big deal, but you never know. So uh, that's how it's gonna go. And hopefully we'll get back over there in a couple minutes and get everything sorted out and um, get it all working again. Okay, so before we end this video off, I did want to show you guys some of the performance related uh, metrics of the device. So you'll see that we do have um, just about four terabytes stored right now. Looks like there was a backup running last night. Um, the temperature is 53 degrees Celsius. We are using the balanced fan mode. It is completely silent. You cannot hear it at all. And I think 55 or 56 is not too bad. And for those of you in America, it is 132 degrees Fahrenheit. There is two hard drives in here. So of course those are going to run a bit warm. But again, it's not something that would be out of the ordinary for hard drives or for a ubiquity product. They always run hot. So I do have the drive pool encrypted. So you have to use a uh, basically key to decrypt it every time the device boots up. But this lets me lock up certain drives on there or certain shares. That way they are encrypted and the files cannot be read if someone were to grab a hard drive from it. Looks like our drives are at 44 degrees Celsius. Currently I'm running Unify OS 4.4.11 and Unify Drive 3.4.3. It's been rock solid, especially over my VPN connection. It's been up for about two months now. Very nice that I have this set up. Um, the reading and writing to it is quick and I believe the person's house that this is at has a 500 megabit internet connection and I think I can max that out. That's kind of nice. 
Um, it's also nice because I do have the web-based file browser, so I'm able to go in, verify my backups synced over there, and all of that kind of stuff. So thank you guys for watching. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have questions, leave them in the comments below. Uh, but that's about it. Thank you for watching. Have a great day. I'll see you guys in the next video.